But it does mean they have to redeploy a few, yeah. don't they? And, and yeah, they, was one. Well, they who... spread the load because they're not young. Yeah. So Dee's able to take it out wide to Howe, and now cross. And they're inside 50. Not the best sort of delivery for a forward. Pedersen, they read it beautifully. He had the drop, then Pedersen. You could see that. He actually, the kick allowed him to come onto it and jump to collect it at the highest point. So it was going to be whether or not the Hawthorne opponent could get him behind. I'm not sure whether it's Stratton could get yeah. him behind and just get some body on him to create that spoil. Just looking at the matchups as well, Schoenmaker has been, as you use that word, deployed forward this week, which means that Litherland gets his yeah, shot in a key defence post. So Pedersen comes in and his kick is deadly accurate. What a start for the Ds. Well, they've been able to respond. Ruffett had the first shot of the game, and he shanks it out of uh, out of bounds on the fall. Since then, Melbourne have been able to get some good transition running, some good spread from the contest to put themselves in a position to score. They're running forward hard, and they're running forward into space. Daniel Cross gets the handball received there. It's a high kick inside forward 50. But you see there, Pedersen just gets the jump, highest point, and made it very difficult for Litherland. He just couldn't get in enough, couldn't close that gap to create a bit more of a body spoil on Pedersen and kick it from the goal yeah. square. Jones, I've got another crack oh, here. Pedersen's it. been in good marking form today. Yes. Brings that one down. Got his opportunity with Jesse Hogan. A late withdrawal. Ruzi just didn't want to risk him. He's been combating some pretty big bodies. Young Jesse Hogan, we know what a talent he is. And so no risks taken. But Camp Pedersen needs to capitalise on his opportunities. Taken four marks today, already has a goal. He and Garlett Good have boy. kicked them all. Just about for the Demons. He puts it through. Two goals each for Pedersen and Garlett. And the sum total is four goals, 428 for Melbourne. Both on 12 6, 78. Little lazy by the Hawks, outward bound there. They probably could have just tried to get a little bit more run and carry before they just kicked to that. That line set up around 50. Well done, Cam Pedersen. You called it, Hutto. He's got, his hands are very good. To, well, that's actually never been an issue with him. He's always had good hands. Just consistently getting that jump at it like that, yeah. isn't it? The timing of of that. When he's proved again today, when he's had that jump at it, that uh, he's been very clean in the air. Pedersen been tied up numerous times in, in tight situations. That's well, well done. And Vandenberg. And he finds Pedersen inside the 50. See there, Gibson thinking there's enough pressure on this play. I'll just peel away from Cam Pedersen by two or three metres. If it lobs to him, I'll get to him. But if it goes long, because of the pressure up at the ball, I'll get back and assist the goal square. So Pedersen, who has two goals to his name. Well done, Cam. He's kicked that well also. This is an unusual situation. Melbourne have only got two goal kickers, and they've both kicked three goals each. I wonder if that's ever happened before in a game. Oh, I'm sure you'll <laughs> work it out for us. <laughs> we'll He's actually on. played well, though. Now, watch here at the bottom of the screen. There's Pedersen, left-hand side. Gibson, he's just allowed in that because he's already thinking pressure, heat in the middle. It's going to be a long hat kick. I'll get back to the goal square, be third man up and spoil. But the chip kick from Vandenberg is very, very good. And he's aimed it up as well. Mm. Good play. Good play.